So, in the last lecture, we talked about uh, sliding mode control uh, for systems. The dynamics of the systems were given by uh, these equations. And we remember that uh, we can somehow transport, transform the system into this particular form by application of state transformation. Uh, the assumption was that so this Fa, Fb, uh, and E, these are known. Uh, G of x and delta is uncertain. We may or may not know the nominal value of this G of x. This uncertainty, which appears in the same channel as the input, that uncertainty is called matched uncertainty. We remember that uh, for this particular system, we define this sliding surface. By definition of sliding surface, we mean selection of phi of eta. This phi of eta was selected such that these, uh, this uh, system, the equilibrium point of this system, which is at origin, is asymptotically stable. This is how we select phi of eta. So, if uh, the trajectories are on this sliding surface, the dynamics of this system are governed by this equation. Since we have selected this phi of eta to ensure asymptotic stability of this equation, therefore, on the sliding surface, the dynamics of the system are stable, independent of, uh, on, of these uncertainties. And uh, no control law is required on the sliding surface. However, if the initial state is not on the sliding surface, this control law can be utilized to bring any initial condition to the sliding surface that we have proved in the last lecture. Here, this control law consists of two parts, a continuous part and a discontinuous part. Uh, the discontinuous part is determined by an upper bound on the uncertain uh, terms. So, what is the situation if uh, in addition to this uncertainty, we also have Match un, uh, we also have unmatched uncertainty. Let's uh, write it by this notation. Here we can also write instead of x, we can write eta and zeta as well. So to differentiate between this uncertainty and this one, the notation that the subscript delta A, delta B is utilized in the book. So what will be the situation if we have this case? So how did we select uh, this beta? How it was selected in the previous case? It was uh, beta was selected to be an upper bound on rho of x uh, plus uh, where this rho in the last case, in the previous case when we had only matched uncertainty, uh, this was uh, so. In the previous case when we did not have unmatched uncertainty. Uh, what was uh, rho of x? Rho of x was determined from this expression. This expression contains only effect of this thing, delta. So now, what is situation? What will be the difference between the current situation and the previous situation? The only difference is that the upper bound, this will be changed because in addition to this uncertainty, we have another uncertainty as well. So, as far as this control law is concerned, the only change is that this upper bound will be changed. Right? Because in addition to this uncertainty, we have additional ter term as well. What about the behavior of the system on the sliding surface? How we had selected this phi of eta? Phi of eta was selected uh, this phi of eta was selected to stabilize this system here is subscript A to stabilize this system. Now, uh, what is the uh, system now on the sliding surface? On the sliding surface, previously dynamics were governed by this equation. Now, on the sliding surface, the dynamics of this system are governed by this uh, uh, equation. So, what is effect of uncertainty? Un unmatched uncertainty? If this phi of eta can stabilize, asymptotically stabilize the equilibrium point of whole of this system, 
so this sliding mode control will work if this uh, fire feeder cannot handle this uncertainty so sliding mode control will not work so the conclusion sliding mode control can handle uh, matched uncertainties for unmatched uncertainties uh, it may or may not handle the uh, situation if uh, this fire of eta is selected such so that the equilibrium point of this uncertain system is asymptotically stable then sliding mode control will work otherwise it will not work so let's demonstrate it with the help of one example so theta 1 uh, is uncertain theta b is also uncertain we know upper bound on these uncertain parameters so to design sliding mode control for this particular nonlinear system what we need to do is we, not, we need to bring it into normal form into this form by application of state transformation so we can see that uh, this system is already in this regular form we call it regular form so this is already in regular form uh, with the, this one as uh, unmatched uncertainty and this as matched uncertainty is already in regular form so what we need to do is we need to design starting mode control for it so how to proceed first define the starting surface starting uh, this one is uh, unmatched uncertainty and this is the effect of both here this uh, this thing uh, written together uh, is over here so how to define the sliding surface uh, s should be selected uh, in this way in this particular case x uh, 2 minus some function of x1 some function of x1 this should be sliding surface and this function should be selected such that these dynamics uh, minus phi of uh, plus phi of x1 plus theta1 x1 sine of x2 the equilibrium point for this system should be asymptotically stable this phi of x1 should be selected such that the equilibrium point for this system is asymptotically stable so what is your suggestion how to select uh, this, uh, uh, this thing if we did not have any uncertainty then for example phi of x could have been selected to be equal to for example minus x1 if we did not have any uncertainty then if phi of x1 was selected to be equal to minus x1 <coughs> So x1 minus 1 would have been asymptotically stable. So now in this case we also have uncertainty. So how to select this phi of uh, x1? So maybe we can select it in this way. Uh, phi of x1 is equal to minus k into x1 where we need to determine k. Uh, to determine uh, k, uh, let's apply the Lyapunov theory. For this particular system, we can select uh, this uh, Lyapunov function, candidate Lyapunov function, and then what is b dot? Uh, x1 multiplied by x1 dot. x1 dot is given by uh, this relation, where x2 uh, uh, x2 is equal to phi of x, phi of x1 is taken to be equal to minus the x1 this is equal to minus k x1 square uh, plus uh, theta 1 x1 square sine of x2 so what is sine of x2 this is always less than or equal to 1 so this thing is always less than or equal to minus we have uh, replaced this function by an upper value of this thing we should also replace it with uh, its upper value which is a which is the same as uh, if we take uh, minus x1 square common from here 
So what do we get? K minus A. So then if we select from here it is obvious that if we select K to be greater than A then this V dot will be negative definite and these dynamics will be asymptotically stable. Yes? So sin of x2 is a negative function. So we have to uh, replace this function by its upper value. Uh, we have replaced this function by its upper bound. Upper bound uh, on this is uh, uh, if we uh, if up, upper bound is negative definite, then this will be negative definite as well. अगर इस function से जो ज़्यादा positive है, वो भी negative definite है, तो ये खुद तो negative definite होगा नहीं। So we have replaced it with an upper bound. Also theta one can be positive and negative as well. So we have also replaced it with its upper bound. So if k is selected to be greater than a, uh, then uh, the equilibrium point of these dynamics will be asymptotically stable. So on the sliding surface, which is now uh, this what is sliding surface now? Uh, the sliding surface is now given by x2 uh, plus k x1 that is equal to 0. This is sliding surface. So on this sliding surface, the system is asymptotically stable. And uh, uh, then we determine this control law u is equal to E inverse. So please identify everything. E is equal to uh, 1. It is uh, scalar, x1 is scalar. So E is 1. So 1 inverse multiplied by minus L. What was minus L? Minus L was either 0 or the nominal value of G. That is G hat. So what is G hat in this case? G hat is also 1. So minus 1. And then FB. FB. This is FB. Compare it with that thing. So x1 minus partial phi over partial eta. What is uh, phi? Phi of eta, which is in this case x1. Phi of x1, we have selected it to be equal to minus k x1. So it's partial derivative with respect to x1. So here is k partial phi over partial eta multiplied by f a. What is f a? X2. And then plus v. So this is the control law which is uh, this uh, minus 1. So minus x1 plus k x2 plus v. And how v was determined? How to determine v? v is given by this thing. v is equal to minus beta of x into signum of x, signum of s. And what is beta of x? Beta of x is upper bound on this expression, where beta naught is any positive value. What is rho of x? Rho of x is upper bound on this one. What is this expression? This was obtained, you remember, uh, we had finally s dot. We had after substitution of this control law into the expression for s and then by taking the derivative we had s dot and we had written s dot to be in this form delta of t x v. If you substitute this control law into the expression for s dot. So what is s dot in this particular case? s uh, is given by this thing. So s dot is equal to x2 dot plus a x1 dot. x2 dot is this thing. So if you substitute 
this u over here this u over here so uh, I leave it as a homework for you so you have to substitute this u this u into this equation and you will finally have uh, this uh, thing for single input case it will be s will be s dot will be equal to some long expression uh, plus some function multiplied by v so you will have this nonlinear expression you will be required to determine upper bound on this nonlinear expression by the same strategy that we have already uh, learned so therefore uh, you will find finally find v and hence the control law will be found so that is your homework you have also to simulate this example uh, after determination of the uh, control law